and welcome to our latest webinar. Today we're going to be talking about Instagram for Business and how beginners can effectively utilize the social media platform as not only a marketing tool to engage existing clients, but also as a lead generator to attract new clients. Just a note, this is not an in-depth comprehensive look into everything that Instagram can offer businesses. This is a beginner course for those who have never used the social media platform or may have only used it personally and would like to find out how the platform can benefit their business. Before we get started with the basics of Instagram, let's take care of some of the basics of Florida SBDC at USF. You can always stay connected with the Florida SBDC at University of South Florida Muma College of Business by following us on social. We're on most of the platforms and can be found at USF SBDC. It's a great opportunity to stay up to date with the latest business trends and events and connect with other business owners. We'd also like to mention our monthly newsletter that includes all SBDC training opportunities in our region for the coming month and usually has a featured business or featured content to help make doing business easier. You can sign up for our newsletter by just going to sbdctampabay.com and clicking on sign up on the right side of the homepage or scroll down to the bottom of the homepage and click the subscribe button. For those of you who are not familiar with what we do at the Florida SBDC at USF, we offer low cost training, no cost consulting and market research and information for small business owners as defined by the SBA. We are funded in part by the SBA, the state legislator, and various other economic development partners. We offer a wide range of consulting specialties which are identified on your screen now. At USF, we serve small businesses in the 10-county Tampa Bay region, all the way north to Hernando County and south to DeSoto and Highlands County, as you can see on the map here. I'll be your web presenter today. My name is Shonda Wickham. I'm the marketing specialist with the Florida SBDC at USF, and I also do social media consulting for the center. We're going to begin, as all marketers should, with the why. Why should businesses use Instagram as a marketing tool? Over the past couple of years, Instagram has been experiencing a boom in a huge way. In fact, they have climbed to second place as the most popular platform right under Facebook. They have 1 billion monthly active users, 500 million daily active users, and it is the platform with the most engagement. As you can see here, there are many reasons why you shouldn't leave Instagram as an untapped resource. I'm not going to go over each of these, so if you want to take a screenshot, you can. I just really want to point out a few numbers that directly apply to businesses. For starters, there are 25 million businesses currently on Instagram. 200 million people visit at least one business profile each day. 80% of accounts follow a business on Instagram. 60% of users learn about new products through Instagram. And 48% of Instagram users said they've made a purchase due to a brand's video on the platform. So as you can see, there's a lot of potential for lead generation, conversion, and brand loyalty. Now that we understand the why, let's get started with creating a business account. You begin by creating an Instagram account as you normally would. When setting up your business account, you don't want to leave any area incomplete. Make sure that you include all of the following. A consistent name. When choosing your Instagram name, make sure it is consistent with all of your other social media channels, so that way you are easy to find. A quality photo that represents who you are as a company. Ideally, you want your logo displayed prominently. It should not be pixelated and should fit into the Instagram dimensions of 110 by 100 pixels without any of it being cropped out. Use target keywords in your bio. This can include location and industry specific keywords. To attract more potential visitors, don't forget to include relevant hashtags as well. Make sure to add your website address. For bonus points, add a call to action to visit your website at the end of your bio. The website is displayed under your bio, so it will seem intentional. Once all of this is filled out, then you need to activate your account as a business account. This is a really simple process. Go to Settings, Account, switch to Professional Account. It will ask you if you are a business or a creator. Choose which applies to your business. Then you will choose a business category. And then they will ask you to include a contact email. Use the email address of the person who is responsible for answering any questions for the company. 
The last option you have is to link your Instagram to your Facebook business page. To do that, go back to your profile and tap the three bars again and go up to settings, then accounts, linked accounts, and Facebook. By default, your Instagram account will share your personal Facebook profile. To share a business page, click the check mark and then choose a page you manage instead. There are a couple of additional benefits to creating a business account, such as access to analytics to measure performance and advertising opportunities. That's a little more advanced, so we won't delve into that today. We have covered the why and how, now let's move on to the what. What should businesses post? If you already have a Facebook or Twitter account, it may seem intuitive to simply repost the same thing throughout all of the platforms. That may be acceptable when you are first getting started and trying to get your feet wet, but in order to optimize each platform's potential, you need to create a specific strategy for each. What works well on Facebook does not necessarily work well on Instagram. Today we're going to talk about the difference between feed posts and Instagram stories and how to effectively use each. What is the difference between the feed and the stories? To put it simply, your feed is your official brand, the official face of your company. Stories is your unofficial brand. It's basically a look behind the curtain of your business. The feed is essentially the landing page for your business. It introduces the viewer to what your business is all about. Feed posts should be evergreen because they have the potential to stay in your profile forever. It is ideal for reach and it is also where you get discovered by new audience. We'll get to how they find you in a moment. It is important to remember if you post videos on your feed similar to Facebook, the sound is going to be off. All images must be well thought out and professional looking. Again, this is your official brand, the face of your company. Here is a list of the types of posts that your company can create. If you would like to take a screenshot of this, I have divided them into two categories. Those that create leads and those that convert leads. On the create side, we have event recaps, how to's, inspirational quotes, and tips and tricks. On the convert side, we have announcements, testimonials, product demos, and blog teasers. So how do we attract new viewers to even get the ball rolling in generating leads? Hashtags. Over the past few years, hashtags have become part of our vernacular, right? In conversations, some people even use them for emphasis or maybe as a punchline. On Instagram, hashtags are not used for emphasis for people who already follow you, but they're actually a way for people to discover you. In fact, 20% of the time spent on Instagram is browsing the Explore tab. We'll learn about the Explore tab in a moment. How do we use them effectively? For starters, it is important to remember that there is no such thing as too many hashtags. Using hashtags is a great way to grow your audience and to attract new eyes to your page. A post with at least one hashtag averages about 12.6% more engagement than posts without, so it is worth creating a hashtag strategy. The first three types of hashtags a business must consider when building a strategy are branded, campaign, and community. Let's look at three businesses you might recognize as examples. Branded hashtags are the ones you create specifically for your company, essentially your business name. Hashtag Coca-Cola, hashtag Jeep, hashtag Nike. Campaign hashtags are specific slogans that you create to help promote different aspects of your business. Hashtag share a Coke, hashtag it's a Jeep thing, hashtag just do it. Community hashtags are ones that you create to help build a community around your customer base. Hashtag Coca-Cola collector, hashtag Jeep nation, hashtag Nike women. Branded hashtags are great for engagement with existing customers and are a great start, but in order to attract potential customers, you must also utilize other hashtags that can attract those locally and those who are looking for specific elements in your industry. Use terms that will capture a wide audience but are relevant to your business. There are websites out there that let you know which terms are the most popular searches on Instagram. However, if you stick to only popular terms, you will get lost in the sea of millions. So you want to scale down your bait to attract only the most qualified viewers you are trying to catch. These could be local or industry specific. People often wonder if there's a magic number to use. There are a variety of theories regarding the number of hashtags you should use. Some say the magic number is 11. Some say in the low 20s, 
and some suggest using all 30. There is sound reasoning to each suggestion. Those who suggest using all 30 believe that casting a wine net will naturally lead to a larger following. This is true. The more hashtags you use, the more eyes your brand will reach. Those who suggest narrowing your hashtags to only the most 11 relevant believe that this will attract a more specified audience for you and your company and your posts will seem less spammy. However, Instagram is the one social media platform in which you could get away with using as many hashtags as possible. Before we move on to stories, it is really important to point out to all of you Facebookers who are used to sharing links with your posts, you cannot do this on Instagram. The only way you can share a link, or in Instagram speak, swipe up, is if you are a verified account. It is not simple to become verified. Again, that is a little more advanced and we'll cover that in a future webinar. Now let's talk about stories. Stories are a lot more relaxed than what goes on your feed. Stories are momentary, they disappear after 24 hours. They're ideal for engagement and include a lot of fun tools that help with engagement that we will talk about in a second. Unlike with the feed, viewers tend to watch stories with the sound on. They are looser and off the cup and they are in the moment. Again, they're your unofficial brand. Viewers are just checking in on your company. Though stories may seem casual to the viewer, as a business, you still need to have a posting strategy in place. Just like in real life, stories should have a beginning, a middle, and an end. It's essentially like having a conversation with your audience. You are talking with them, not at them. The most important thing you need to remember when creating a story post is that it needs to be engaging. Here are a few common story posts that you could create. Behind the scenes, Q&A, which can be live, customer spotlights, sneak peeks, promoting what's new, promoting blog posts, taking a poll, and what inspires you. I mentioned that stories only last 24 hours, but don't worry, if you create content that you want to save to your page forever, Instagram provides a way with story highlights. To make it easier on viewers, you could create different categories and even customize file covers to match your business's branding standards. Now that you have a better understanding of posting on Instagram, how do you actually create a post? It is important to understand that Instagram is designed specifically as a mobile app. Can you post from your desktop? Yes, but you're going to have to jump through a few hoops to do it and that is far too advanced for this particular webinar. You will have to use Instagram app on your phone, iPad, tablet, or any other mobile device you may have. Between you and me, it's my biggest beef with the platform, particularly when I create videos on my computer that I want to share on Instagram. Speaking of videos, an important note to remember, unless you are verified, the videos you post on your feed cannot be longer than a minute, so keep that in mind. Also, there is an optimal size for your photos. Actually, there's an optimal size for Instagram feed and there's an optimal size for stories. Let's first talk about what not to do. Do not post horizontal photos on either. It will be cropped out in the feed and it will shrink in the stories unless you zoom in and then again it will crop the photo. Square is the optimal shape for the feed. Vertical 9x16 is optimal for stories. Okay, so how do we post? Let's start by opening the app. You will see a navigation bar at the bottom of your screen. Starting from left to right, let's talk about what each button does. The home icon. This home button will take you to your newsfeed where you can scroll down and find out what the accounts you follow are posting. The magnifying glass. This is the explore tab and it features posts from users that you do not follow. It also allows you to search for other users, hashtags, or posts that may interest you based on previous searches. We will get to the middle icon in a moment. The heart. This is where you will see all of your likes, comments, and follows. Make sure you respond to any comments and follow those who have followed you. This will help build relationships. Your profile photo. This is where you can view your feed, your story highlights, and edit your profile. Let's get back to the middle icon. Add a photo. This is how you create a post. You can add a photo or video from your gallery or snap a fresh one while posting. To post multiple photos, select the layered icon and your gallery will pop up again. This will allow you to choose up to 10 photos and they will display in the order you like. Once you have selected your photo, photos, or video, click next in the top right corner. The next page will allow you to choose a preset filter or edit your image quality from scratch. 
Then click next in the top right corner again. This is where you write your caption, tag people, and add a location. This is where you can also add it to other linked platforms simultaneously. Then click share and you are finished. Finally, let's go over how you post a story. Simply click the camera button in the top left corner on the home page. You will have three options to choose from. You could choose an image or video from your gallery. You could create a story from scratch using a variety of colored backgrounds, or you could go live. When you choose create or add a photo or video from your gallery, there are a lot of fun, different interactive elements you can include in your post that can help with engagement. These include taking a poll for feedback, asking a question, adding GIFs and music, and including a countdown to upcoming event or a launch to name a few. They have even started a couple of new features for businesses affected by the COVID pandemic, including the ability to order food or gift cards. When you go live, your viewers can actually engage with you by commenting or asking questions. You can also go live with one of your viewers. This is a great way to conduct live interviews. These interviews could be with employees or customers and can be a great asset for product launches. Once you are finished with your live broadcast, you can either share it to your story or delete the video. Those stories have a shelf life of 24 hours. Once you post a story, there are a few things you could do after, such as share it as a post, share it to other linked platforms, save the photo or video to your phone, share it with someone in a direct message, or highlight it. You could create specialized highlight tabs by pressing the plus symbol. You will be prompted to choose a photo from your gallery, then you will be prompted to name the category, and you will have the option to create a customized image for that folder. And that's it. That's the basic of Instagram for business. If you need additional social media or marketing assistance or assistance with any of the other specialty areas you see on your screen now, requesting a no cost consulting session is easy. To request a consultation, just go to our website at sbdctampabay.com and click on the schedule a consultant button. Right now that button is located on the right side of the page, but normally it will be on the left side. Input all of the required information and someone from our office will reach out within a few days to get you scheduled with a consultant who can help. We will also have resources available at your fingertips on that website. Simply click on the resources tab and you will find templates, helpful tips and tricks, and important links for financial planning, marketing, government contracting, international trade, and disaster preparedness. Download the tools for free and put them to work for your business. If you liked what you learned here today, please go to our Facebook page and give us a testimonial or visit us on LinkedIn and leave us a comment. You can find me on LinkedIn as well and recommend or verify my skills. That concludes our webinar today. Thank you for joining us. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel to get notifications on webinars to come or check out previous webinars and success stories from local businesses. Have a great day.